Hi everyone, it's Danny. Alrighty, so today we're gonna discuss about orchid viruses once again. Now, if you're a long time subscriber, you might know that I have been testing for virus in my collection for a year and something now using the Agdia Immunostrips. I'll present them to you today, uh, but if you want to learn more about viruses, how they affect orchids, why is it so important to discover viruses, I'll share an annotation right here somewhere where I made the first video about viruses, what they are, some information regarding them, and of course telling you they have no cure and this is why you want to make sure that you don't have virus orchids in your collection because a virus orchids can transmit the virus further on. So back then I showed you how to use the Cymbidium mosaic virus and the Oncidium uh, ring spot virus test kits. And I ordered myself some more tests because I ran out and Acti actually sent me some more samples for some other viruses which are not specific necessarily to orchids but can affect orchids. Now the most common viruses are of course the Oncidium ring spot virus and Cymbidium mosaic virus but other viruses can infect orchids so if your uh, results come out negative for the cymbidium and oncidium specific viruses doesn't really mean your orchid is not virus so I'm gonna be testing them on my orchids today hopefully I don't have any more virus orchids in my collection but I do have a few question marks with some of the orchids and today I'm gonna find out if I have virus orchids or not okay let us start once again with the cymbidium uh, mosaic virus and oncidium uh, ring spot virus just to review a little bit about what this virus can do. Okay, so here I have a test from Agdia that actually tests for the Cymbidium mosaic virus and Oncidium ring spot virus. So practically you test for both of these viruses. As I mentioned, these are the most spread viruses in orchid collections. Not the only ones, but the vast majority of cases, they do have these viruses. Now, when you're gonna order the test kit, you will get a tube which contains the actual test strips, which we're gonna be using. Also a bag containing the envelopes with the reactive fluid, which needs to be refrigerated, as you can see here. And also a user manual, which tells you exactly how to use them and how to read them. So these viruses actually account for the vast majority of infected orchids, as I told you. Some signs uh, that tell you your orchid might be virus are color breaking on the orchid flowers, but also strange patterns on the leaves, discoloration of the leaves, uh, ring shaped patches on the leaves and so on. I do have some videos with some positive results that I got in the past, so I will add an annotation somewhere here. Also, I will add all these links in the description, so if you wanna check those videos out, you can visit the description. So I'll show you how to test using this test kit uh, for these viruses because I do have a case which is pretty curious. And then we're gonna go through the other tests as well following the same procedure. This is the Encyclia Vitalina that I just ordered from a Wickman and luckily enough it managed to bloom with a few buds that were not damaged too much in transport. However, I have a serious issue with this orchid and I'll try to give you a close-up of the flower. Do you see the color of the flower? I'm not sure if you can see, but I have color break on the flower. Now, one of the symptoms that viruses show is color break on the flower. Now, this sign right here is the most frightening thing you can see on your orchid because spotting on the leaves can mean a multitude of things. It can be sunburn, it can be fertilizer burn, it can be pest damage, it can be all sorts of things. But with flowers, there aren't many things that can do this to a flower. So yeah, I want to test this orchid because usually the Cymbidia mosaic virus and the, the other one usually give this side effect. I also see on one of the leaves here some discoloration, hopefully you can see. Again, this does not look good to me and I think this is the leaf that I will be testing or the newest leaf. Actually, um, I'm going to be testing the newest leaf which has this flower. So, to test this orchid is actually pretty easy. I'm going to be using the Agdia Immunostrips. These are super easy to use. You can perform the test in your home. It takes a few minutes, uh, so you don't have to wait around for the lab results to come. If you don't have a lab in your territory or country, this is really a nice thing to have. And um, I'm going to be using some sterile gloves and also sterile scissors. I sterilized the scissors with alcohol and also I flamed it a little bit so I make sure there are no diseases on it because we will need to cut a sample of the leaf. So what I'm gonna do, if you've watched the other videos, you already know how to do this. You have 
the instructions inside. You have a manual here in case you don't know how to use this test, but I'm gonna show you. So what I'm gonna do here, this is the reactive fluid, which needs to react with the sampled leaf. I'm gonna cut the top of the envelope like so. I'm gonna place this somewhere vertically, so don't place it horizontally. I'm gonna take out the tube with my test strips and I'm gonna be cutting a sample of the leaf that I wanna test. I'm gonna test this leaf right here. So I'm gonna be cutting a sample of this size and then I'm gonna place it inside the envelope with the reactive fluid. Now we need to crush this leaf in order for its vital juices to mix with the reactive fluid. For this I actually use the handle of the scissors and you need to find yourself a flat surface and you need to crush this leaf. So this is how your ending fluid should look like. It should be green. Uh, the chlorophyll from the leaf has to mix with the reactive fluid in order to get a correct reading. So what you need to do now is get a test from the tube and insert it inside this envelope. When you insert it, make sure that the fluid does not go above this green line that you see here. Let me see if I can make this more visible for you. There you go. So the fluid should only stay within the green line, not above the green line. So all you have to do now is wait. Place this envelope vertically somewhere and wait for the results. This will only take a few minutes and as you can see already the fluid is starting to go up on the strip. Let us wait and hope we don't have any viruses. Okay, so about five minutes have passed and if I look at my test, I see that it came out negative. The only line that you see is the control line and if you look in the user manual, you will know how to read these tests. If I would have had some viruses, I would have had multiple strips or multiple lines on this strip, but it seems that it came out negative. This is actually good news. Now maybe the color streaking that I have on my flower is due to transport and stress and so on. I don't know. I do intend to keep this orchid. Of course, if the test is negative, I'm not gonna toss it away. It costed me 20 euros. So I don't wanna toss it away. This is good news, but I will keep an eye on it. I will try to make sure it does not touch any of my other orchids, which I know are not infected and so on. Just take a few precaution measures. Maybe this is just a sign of stress and transport and so on, because the test really did came out negative. The next blooming should be normal, theoretically. If it's not normal, I will repeat the test because sometimes if there isn't enough quantity of virus detected, the test might not show an infection valid result. I have never had it happen so far. I, I'm using these tests for the past one year and a half, but you never know. So this is really good news. I will not toss my plant away, uh, but I will keep an eye on it. Okay, the next group of viruses we're going to be testing for are the potty viruses. Now, this family of viruses accounts for 30% of known plant viruses. It's a huge family. Now, when you're going to have the results for the test, you will not know exactly the virus that your orchid is infected with because there are just so, so many. So you will not know exactly the virus you have. You will know it belongs to the potty virus category, which is so, so wide. Now, some signs that an orchid might be infected with potty virus they're pretty elusive, I have to say, starting from patches, dark patches on the leaves, to discolorations and chlorosis even, and um, sometimes even rings. It really depends because there are so many strains of viruses. But again, patches on the leaves are not a good sign if your orchid is not vigorous, does not grow well, seems to lose new growth with, without any particular reason. It might be a potty virus. If you test your orchid and it comes out negative for Symbidium mosaic virus and um, Oncidium ring spot virus, you can then go ahead and test with the potty virus test because it does not mean your orchid is not virused if it does show these signs, but it comes out negative for the other two viruses. Uh, the cases are not many, but I would suggest that polyviruses are the second type of virus uh, usually found in orchids. Alrighty, let us test an orchid now. 
Okay, so I disinfected my gloves with alcohol, the scissors with alcohol, and a torch. And now we're going to be testing this orchid. Now, this is an orchid which obtained these spotting on the leaves after I actually repotted it in a media of coconut husk, which actually gave me a lot of trouble with many, 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 many orchids uh, displaying pretty much the same symptoms. Now, this orchid does not show positive for Cymbidium mosaic virus or Oncidium uh, ring spot virus, but maybe it has a different virus because for the life of me, I cannot cure this orchid. So I will not show you the whole process. It's basically the same as I showed you earlier, but I'm gonna come back with the result. Okay, so I am back with the results of the test. And as you can see, I only have one line showing. This shows a negative result. If I would have had two lines, this orchid would have been infested with a potivirus. But since I only have one single line showing, I know this orchid is not infested with a potivirus, which is good news. Okay, another type of virus that can infect orchids is the tomato spotted wilt virus. That's a mouthful. Now, this virus again creates those circle patterns on leaves. If you have a fruit, for example, on tomatoes, it can create those patterns on tomatoes as well. But of course, orchids don't have fruits, um, not in the sense of edible fruits. But usually this type of virus will create some sort of um, circular pattern on the leaf in most cases. And I do have an orchid that has this pattern. It came out negative for the other, for the Cymbidium and uh, Oncidium ring spot mosaic viruses. So I'm really curious if I'm dealing with a different type of virus. In any case, this is not as widely spread as the other two viruses, uh, but nonetheless, I do wanna test it because I wanna find out if my orchid needs to be thrown away or not. Okay, so the next plant we will test is this Phalaenopsis orchid, which displays a very peculiar pattern on its leaves. Now, I will test this orchid for the tomato spotted wilt virus, which can sometimes look like this. So I'll come back with the results. And we are back with the results of the test, and as you can see, I only have one line showing. This means the test is negative, so my orchid is not infected with the tomato spotted wilt virus. And the last virus that we're gonna test for is the impatience necrotic spot virus, or short INSV. Now, this is a virus that usually affects ornamentals, but it also affects vegetables and orchids, of course. Again, the signs for this virus are pretty elusive. Chlorosis, as the name suggests, uh, spotting in some cases, in any way, patches on the leaves. And of course, like all viruses that uh, non-vigorous growth pattern of any orchid. So again, I will test some weird looking orchids that I have for this virus as well, uh, see what the results come. Again, this is not a very, very widely spread virus in um, orchid growing, but since this virus can affect easily other ornamentals, and you know that in nurseries, they don't necessarily always grow only orchids, they have other plants as well. I do have a little bit of a fear that orchids might get infected with this virus from other ornamentals. So we're gonna test an orchid and hopefully it's not gonna come out positive. We'll see. So here we have another orchid that suffered the same fate as my other one. It has all sorts of spotting on the leaves. So this orchid will be tested for the impatience necrotic spot virus. And this is another virus that can affect orchids. I'm not sure if this are the symptoms for it because usually for these viruses, the symptoms are very elusive and they can um, vary from one plant to another. So let's test this orchid. Again, I will sterilize my uh, gloves and also my scissors and I'll come back with the result. So here we go, we are back with the results. As you can see, I only have the control line, which means this orchid is not infected with a INSV virus which again is very good news. So as you can see, I did not detect any infected orchids. That's such good news. But I do still have more tests and I'm gonna keep them and test in the future because it is inevitable at some point that you will have a virus orchid. It just happens and that is that. But if you stay on top of things, you can actually control the situation. I do have another video on how to try to limit the virus spread in an orchid collection. So I will add in the description and probably somewhere here the link to that video as well. So I will link in the description all the videos that I ever made about 
um, viruses. And I do have an answer for Holy City orchids. Party viruses can actually be spread through aphids and through spider mites and so on. I will add some uh, articles and some um, informative stuff from Agdia in the description as well so you can download them and learn more and also you can see some pictures of signs of virus and so on so you know a bit more about viruses and if you're interested to know the symptoms of viruses you can definitely check it out but as you can see the symptoms sometimes are elusive so if you see an orchid with a ring spot maybe it's not a virus maybe it's a fungal disease but maybe it's a virus so it's uh, it's a nightmare this is any orchid grower's nightmare but we have the tests now I made another video with these tests on vegetables as well because of course they can work on vegetables as well. So I will add a link towards that video as well. Also I will link the Agdia site so you can see what other types of viruses can affect orchids and what other types of tests they can offer. And also if you are interested in buying these tests. If you are in the USA, I will add a link towards uh, contacting Agdia USA and you can email them and of course they're gonna help you out. But if you are from Europe, Africa or Middle East, I have some very, very good news for you. I will add in the description uh, below an email which you can actually contact and get in touch with Salima, which is my contact for uh, the strips that I order. And she will actually help you out with ordering these tests also, you will have a 20% discount and all the information um, I give you now is in the description below. You have the prices for the tests. I will give you they're not very cheap, but Agdia is really trying to make this as cheap as possible. If you have laboratories, you know that one sample costs $5 or something like that to test. So it, it is within that price range. And also Agdia are trying to lower the transport fees, but it just depends on your territory um, and on your region, of course. So you will have 20% discount for the tests for orchids, for the test that includes the Cymbidium mosaic virus and the Oncidium ring spot virus, which are the most common viruses you actually find with orchids. So if you reside in Europe, Africa and Middle East, you have the, this discount and you have all the information down in the description. And as I said, even if they cost a bit more than uh, your average orchid, it, it is well worth it. And I'm not just saying this. I can sleep better at night knowing that I discarded my virus orchids and kept only the healthy orchids. So check the description for all the information that I can provide you. Also, if you're interested in purchasing these tests, contact Salima. I swear she's just the nicest person that I've ever met and helped me out a lot, making uh, ordering very easy for me and so on. So do check the description. I'm telling you at least for those orchids that give you nightmares and you don't know what to do with them, you know, this is the confirmation you're looking for. If you live in an area which does not have a laboratory like me, this is really a lifesaver. So, okay, gang, thank you for watching. Hope you found this useful. If you want to see more videos from me, don't forget to subscribe. Check the description for all the information that I know of regarding viruses. So, I'll give you everything I know about viruses. Um, and if you want to leave me questions or suggestions, or if you need my help in any way with testing and viruses and ordering or anything, um, just message me. Me and I'll try to help you out the best I can. And yeah, just follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you want to stay in touch. I'll see you next time. Bye!